Type Afghanistan into Google and see what you find. Bombings. An explosion ripped through a wedding in Kabul, Afghanistan, killing dozens of people. In War. Crisis. <laughs> these are normally the pictures that come to mind when you hear the name Afghanistan. But are these tragic events really that common? Yes, tragedy strikes Afghanistan on a daily basis, a country at war for 40 years. But is there another side to Afghanistan that is rarely covered? Let's find out. The world's deadliest conflict. The war should end in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will smile towards life because life is worth smiling. Not a day without violence. We will show that resilience. We will not allow people to know that we have weakened. <laughs> Our families shed blood for this country. Welcome to icy cold Eastern Europe here in South Hungary. Uh, today I'm going to be answering your questions about uh, Afghanistan that you asked me on Instagram mainly. Mostly to do with Afghanistan but uh, also you guys asked some other questions as well so I'll throw them in there. So some of my Patreons asked some questions on Patreon so I'm going to answer them first. So Bang Leon asks, I like the Afghanistan vids but I'm a bit concerned that you're going more and more extreme. Maybe go somewhere normal for a bit and be more relaxed and more fun with the content. It doesn't always have to be super crazy places. My question is with the progressively more crazy places, do you enjoy the actual travel just as much or does it get a bit wearing because of the crazy factor? Really good question and a few other people have uh, asked this or raised concern about this. Yes, definitely the next location is going to be a lot more relaxed than Afghanistan. It's still going to be a country considered as a hostile environment with some bad recent history but I would argue that not all the places I go are actually crazy a lot of them are perceived to be crazy and there's a huge difference for example it might not be the best example because of the current events right now but Iran I, Iran is a super safe place to travel as a foreigner you can't really take anybody's word about that apart from the people who have traveled in the country I know on the it, the headlines all we see is you know Iran at war USA you know most of these things are actually happening but there's a whole nother side to it when you actually go to the country you'll realize how kind the people are, how easy going it is and how safe it is. I felt safer walking around the capital city of Iran at night than I do in uh, some cities in my home country of New Zealand so it's not as simple as what may be perceived to be dangerous. I, I will grant you that Venezuela and Afghanistan are very dangerous places but last year I also went to Somalia or Somaliland. Somaliland specifically was very safe place I felt um, and I get a lot of comments like oh really safe when you have to walk around with an armed guard you know it's, it's not so simple guns are commonplace in Africa that's a revenue stream for the locals as well I would argue that Somaliland is not a dangerous place of course that's up for debate but you talk to the locals and they don't feel in danger whereas you go to somewhere like Venezuela or Afghanistan they feel in danger and I think the locals are the best way to gauge their own country right not what we read in the headlines to be fair I don't think you could go much more extreme than Afghanistan considering it's labeled one of the most dangerous conflict zones of the world I think nine children a day are either killed or seriously injured so that place is very dangerous however I would look at somewhere like Iran on a different spectrum this isn't any like Iran propaganda or anything but this is just my personal experience uh, Iraqi Kurdistan's another one people would think you know Iraq dangerous well this is a separate autonomous region inside that area of the world you would see the word Iraq you would instantly think you know the previous wars and still a bit unstable with like ISIS and things there are certain areas of these countries that are actually completely fine and it's not really cool to to paint a country with a brush completely like that because if you take the USA for example example you could think of parts of Chicago where there's extremely high murder rates that doesn't mean that the whole of the USA is completely off limits does it so it, it, it's good to think about these things that way but yes in short my next travels won't be as extreme as Afghanistan or Venezuela but I think it'll be just as interesting another patreon of mine Graham he's riding from Togo which is amazing African country he's asking are there any places you've traveled to intending to film but have had to leave because you felt too unsafe no, not at all. 
uh, not even come close to that everywhere I've, I've been. I haven't, I, there might have been moments when I felt uncomfortable filming, but nowhere near as it pushed me to turn around and leave a country. Maybe I've been lucky in that sense, but I think generally I do, you know, sufficient research to understand the current situation of the country and where there is a level of risk in the places I go to, it's not all just uh, dangerous optimism. I, I, I do, you know, have a pretty good idea of what I'm getting myself into. The more countries I go to, the more experience I gain and the better I can gauge a place. That's not to say that I won't run into problems in the future, but currently I haven't had those issues. And the last question from my patrons, and I'll move on to the Instagram questions, it's actually from Combi Life. If you don't know Combi Life, it's a couple, Ben and Leah. Ben's from UK, Leah's from Australia. They drive a old VW Combi around the world. It's, it's pretty beautiful. They drove from the southernmost tip of South America all the way to uh, Alaska. And they picked up a, a street dog from Peru on the way. And now they're gonna be driving all the way from UK to Australia. So here's their question. They sent it in video form. Hey Nick, uh, congratulations on the series, mate. Fantastic work. We are very proud supporters on Patreon. Uh, we are also going around the world, driving around the world, and we're also filming a series. So we kind of want to know, how have people responded to you when you've had your camera? Are they reluctant to talk, or do they shy away, or have they been quite open with the camera? Yeah, because we've had mixed responses, so we'd like to know what um, your experience is with that and how you handle it. And also one other quick question we've been, we are traveling with a dog as well, and some of the countries that you've been to, we just want to know how um, people's reactions have been towards other dogs and uh, just to know what to uh, expect in some countries that you've been to. Keep up the great work mate and happy travels! Regarding the filming guys, I think you guys have uh, you know, experienced a lot of uh, different situations in different countries. But one thing I, I have noticed, some Middle Eastern countries and some African countries, they really do not like the camera and you have to kind of figure out how you can do it in a way where you, you get sufficient content to show the country, but you don't disrespect anyone. And that's a very, very fine line to balance and uh, it's something I'm always you know, learning. I would just say go into situations you know, and kind of suss them out a little bit, get vibes from the people but yeah it's, it's really tricky and, and you'll find out the first few days you're in a new country but even just uh, walking around vlogging filming myself sometimes I get shouted at just for filming myself so it can be a bit uncomfortable sometimes but you just kind of trial and error I will say especially some Middle Eastern countries and African countries North African countries they can be very uh, put off by the camera and I understand that because it must be a very alien sight seeing Westerners like us walking around with these big you know expensive cameras it must look very very strange to them and maybe it's quite intimidating uh, so I understand it so that's why it's best to kind of feel it out. Leah as for your dog Alaska um, I can't really give you any advice because I don't travel with a dog but I would say in countries that have a lot of street dogs be a bit careful. When I was in Bangladesh we were staying with this lovely local couple they had a, a pet dog and we were just sitting at a cafe and then some dogs came out of nowhere and just grabbed the dog's neck with their mouth and just, I thought it was dead, but um, they ended up saving it. So I would just say be very careful of other street dogs because they can be quite violent. Romanian street dogs, I think, are the worst I've come across. But then Indian can be quite hostile as well. And uh, Southeast Asian, not too bad, but yeah, just uh, keep a look out after your dog Alaska there. Definitely check out Combi Life's channel. I'll leave it linked below. Just before we move on to the Instagram questions, I just want to give a thank you to the sponsor. As you can imagine, traveling to some of the places I travel to, it is essential to keep my personal documents and details secure online. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. So the sponsor of today's video is Dashlane. Dashlane combines four different privacy tools in one easy to use app on desktop or mobile. As soon as you download it, you will never have to worry about online security. You won't have to worry about your passwords getting stolen or your information being used by big corporations for their own marketing technique. It'll also autofill websites like Airbnb or flight booking websites, securely save your credit details so you won't have to fill them out every time. Dashlane will also let you know if your security of your computer or your phone has been compromised and it can also do a complete system scan to make sure that none of your passwords are being used by hackers. There is a free version of Dashlane and there's also a premium version so you can try it out firstly and see if you like it and then if you want to unlock the premium features then you can upgrade to the premium option. There's also 
also a VPN built into Dashlane Premium, which is super handy these days. I'm a huge advocate of VPNs, most importantly to keep your information safe. If you want to try Dashlane out, then I have a 10% discount code below. Thanks to Dashlane for sponsoring this video and on to the questions. I did get a lot of questions about the young boy running after me with the eggs uh, under his arm. That video clip really caught a lot of your hearts and as does it, did it mine. I mean, it's, it basically shows the situation. People so desperate to make just the smallest amount of money selling eggs and you know, that young boy's eyes were so distressed and so captivating. I've never had a response like that on any other clip I've ever put on any of my videos. A lot of you guys asked me why I didn't stop to buy eggs. You've got to understand that traveling in these regions, especially I think a few days before that, there was people taken off a bus and executed and these incidents are not rare they're happening all the time so just to open the door you have to have special clearance and um, it has to be pre-organized you can't be just driving down the remote regions of Afghanistan and just open the door whenever you want it doesn't really work like that so I wasn't able to give the guy any money um, but you know we hope with this whole campaign maybe we don't help that specific child but there's many other kids in that situation that, that will be helped and that's that's not a question that's 100 percent from this campaign so in a roundabout way we are helping these children but that specific boy um it just wasn't possible Vicar Sky World. Hello Nick, I would like to know what purpose and goal do you have for each new journey be safe? Uh, I guess I would say the goal is to show the country from more of a local's perspective and, and talk to the locals and hear what they have to say and kind of get another side to the headlines that we read about countries. Although those things may be happening like I mentioned just before, there is so much more to a country than that and I really want to show the more human aspect like i've mentioned many times that's basically the the purpose and goal afghanistan in particular was it was largely that but it was also to try and help the kids in need so i hope i was able to strike a balance with that also just an update on the goal uh, from afghanistan we either just hit or we're just about to hit a hundred thousand so that's the goal that's three hundred thousand meals for children in need the equivalent to that's really beautiful to see that we were able to make that difference wouldn't be impossible without you guys the audience opening your hearts like that so just a heartfelt thank you from me and from everybody at unicef as well we're, we're blown away by your generosity it's uh, it's really beautiful here's a good uh, question many people ask this one but this one in particular is xx roel d jex did you feel scared while you were in afghanistan it's really hard to say i would say that i felt kind of uh there was definitely a lot of adrenaline, but scared per se, I wouldn't say scared. There were times where it felt a bit uneasy, but scared specifically, not really, because I knew we were in quite a controlled environment. We had the resources of United Nations and UNICEF, so we had quite a good understanding of what was going on around us. We had reports coming in if, if there was something happening nearby, so it was really quite a controlled environment. I mean, I'm sure in places that I've visited in the past, I've been in more danger and not known about it. For example, in Venezuela, I mean, I would consider Venezuela probably more dangerous from a perspective of, of being you know, hurt or robbed than Afghanistan. Just because I'm a Western looking guy and in Venezuela things can get quite hostile when it comes to robbing and uh, I feel like I dodged a lot of bullets especially going into the biggest slum in Latin America. The murder rates there are through the roof, uh, gun crime is out of hand and going into that neighborhood I'm sure you know, there were some things that we were lucky. To, to miss so I would say in Afghanistan I knew it was much more controlled and I and I don't think they'd be willing to take a gigantic risk so in short I didn't really feel scared but you know the adrenaline was definitely pumping at some times Majan Drobe where did you feel more safe Venezuela or Afghanistan same similar topic uh, I would say I would feel more safe in Afghanistan especially we were there was one point we were coming into a police checkpoint and the police officer started waving us down and our driver just drove through the checkpoint police officer like was ready to pull his gun um, and I thought he was gonna shoot out the back window to be honest I was like what are you doing man he's like I'm not stopping for him he's probably just trying to get money out of me we drove past another policeman just a few minutes down the road and the policeman you know didn't do or anything or obviously it was none the wiser if I think if we were really doing something wrong that police officer would have radioed forward 
but uh, that kind of thing gives me a feeling that it's much more dangerous in Venezuela. This is a really good question about women in Afghanistan. Silzy Island, I have a question about women in burqa. In your videos I saw plenty of women wearing burqa, but just as many wearing only a scarf. Is it their choice or their families? I see a local guy has answered this, so I'm just going to read his response. His name is Hassan Mohammed 16 He says, it depends. Most people who live in capital of Afghanistan like Kabul or other big cities like Mazari Sharif, Herat and Bamiyan, they wear just a scarf. The women who only wear burqa live in Jalalabad, Kandahar. It depends where they live and it also depends on some families are so religious that they don't allow their female members without a burqa. Thank you Hassan for answering that. Yeah, it really depends on I think the families. It's not a huge ex uh, area of expertise for me but I think it depends on the families and their upbringing and their beliefs and things whether their children do or don't wear burqas or their wives. This is a good question that I get quite a lot. Uh, Backtack, Backpack Topia asks, how and where do you find and choose your local guides like Lenny in Venezuela or Khaled in Somaliland? Um, another example I can think of, Aryan in Afghanistan. Aryan actually works for UNICEF, if you didn't get that from the videos. He um, is a translator and kind of a press communicator of uh, UNICEF uh, Afghanistan. So he was a really, really good translator and a, a lot of fun to travel with. Uh, if you saw him in the videos, he, he really put the emotion in the translations, which is sometimes lost. And so that's really key. So uh, a huge thank you to Aryan. So that's Aryan. In other countries, because I've been traveling for so long, like seven years off and on, you know, I, I've built up quite a good contact list. I can almost find somebody in pretty much any country I want. If I reach out to somebody who I know who might know somebody who might know somebody who might know somebody, that's basically how I find my contacts. And most of the time I'm really, really fortunate with the people I get because it's, it's so key to um, make that connection with the locals, you know. There's a few questions here about do you think you are safer as a non-American or while in Afghanistan did you feel like anything could have sparked off a conflict due to a misunderstanding of you looking like an American but actually being from New Zealand. Glad you're safe, man. That's Krononsk and Caitlin Laundry. I know American travelers. I think a, a big idea that I see a lot is that, you know, Americans are so, so hated in the world. Again, I think that people in, in foreign countries understand that people are not their politics for the most part. I have been accused of a Muslim hater because of what happened in Christchurch with the massacre in the mosque because I'm in New Zealand, but that's a one-off story. That's the only negative thing that's happened to me in that respect. Really, that's off the top of my head. There might have been a few other little things, but that's the only one that comes to mind. Um, I think people, you know, largely understand that, you know, you're not, you're not your government. And I know a lot of Americans that travel to many countries and they have, you know, they travel the same as me, they don't have these issues. So yeah, I would say if you're from the US, then like just like chill out a bit, don't worry too much. Do your research and everything and understand what you're getting yourself into. But it's not everybody hates you. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I, that, that would be my advice. Simply Picks asks, glad to see and hear you are back and safe from Afghanistan. Do you find thirst now for danger in your traveling? It is quite interesting to go to places that are actually dangerous. That's not including perceived dangerous places because I just covered that. It is quite interesting and, and I know I'm taking a big risk, you know, and anybody who thinks that I'm saying these countries are safe to travel with, well then they're completely misreading the videos. I go to these countries to gain a greater understanding. It's not like these countries are just dangerous, you know, th there's a reason that these things happen, you know, whether it's history or current politics or, or whatever it might be. And it's so, it's so interesting for me to, to go to these places and unpack what's going on you know whether it's through my videos or just for my own personal interest and this isn't just you know traveling and 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 world travel and, and world politics is not just my job you know I, I I find it fascinating I love traveling and I love world history and geography and all these things so it's, it's not just for for the views as I've been accused for a few times it's also because it's interesting to me so um I guess you could describe that as a form of thirst, yes. Tavora Foya, on a human level, what was the hardest thing for you to witness in Afghanistan and what was the most uplifting? The hardest thing would be going to the hospitals and the clinics and seeing the children in absolute dire need, starving, malnourished, diseased, everything you can imagine. That, that was probably the hardest. The boy as well that, that I was just talking about, the clip, that was definitely hard to witness. It's just a combination of these things, especially seeing malnourished children face to face is very heavy to witness. And it's hard to know how much that affects you on a deeper level, you know. You come back to a country where these things aren't so prominent and it, and it definitely messes with your head a bit because, you know, part of you is still there in Afghanistan and you're 
you know, it kind of eats you up inside in a way. And uh, I'm still working with ways to, to process that. But yeah, obviously the real victims are the, the people there. So I would say as a whole, just seeing people being scared to go just down to their local park because they might not come back and see their families because they might be victim to a terrorist attack or something of that nature. Just the whole atmosphere of the place. Uh, was the hardest to see. The most uplifting part of the trip, easy to answer that question, is the people. The people of Afghanistan are absolutely amazing, welcoming, after everything they've been through, 40 years of war, and they're still willing to open up, have a chat. After all the international programs and troops and, and military, terrible, terrible, beyond comprehension events, you know, on a regular basis. And they're still willing to, to see a, a guy that looks like me. And they're still ready to open their hearts and talk to me. So yeah, that that's, that's, says something. Says a lot. So yeah, the people of Afghanistan were definitely, you know, the highlight. Uh, anyway, guys, I would like to uh, end the video there. And I just want to say, you know, thank you. Uh, there's not going to be any videos for a little while because I'm going to be taking a bit of a break. The last 12 months was heavy. On the YouTube channel last year, we did Iran, Iraq, Venezuela, Somalia, Somaliland and Afghanistan so it has been very heavy 2019 so I'm gonna take a bit of a break now but I have my plane tickets booked for the next trip so don't fret uh, there'll be more videos coming and thank you for your patience if you want to stay up to up to date when I'm gonna be traveling again connect to my Instagram I'll be doing any updates on there thank you for the support over the year it's been amazing we've done some pretty cool things together uh, the soup kitchen in Venezuela I'll make a separate video on that but We've opened a bunch more soup kitchens now, and that's thanks to you. Also a huge thank you for the UNICEF campaign. I also want to give a quick thank you to a few people who helped me out in Afghanistan. Obviously we've got Ari on the translator, Shelly and Mike from UNICEF who made this whole thing possible. Tony, our security advisor that kept us alive. There's so many more people that I could mention, but you guys know who you are. And thank you so much for making that Afghanistan trip possible. It was unbelievable. Also a huge thank you to my Patreons for supporting me like you do. Thank you so much for the past year. It's been unreal, surreal. I guess the takeaway from the last year of travels is that people from foreign lands are not their government. Not everybody in the country is what you see on the news. There are bad things in certain places, but that goes for all countries. Western countries are not uh, immune from that. There are terrible things going on in all places. There's so much more to countries than what we read and see. Most of you watching these videos know that, but I, I, I think it's important to drive that home and uh, start a conversation about these things. It's a good way to bring around a better awareness and understanding of the world. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I will see you very soon. I want to say to you know to your people don't believe the media I'm not uh, you know a person related to the government I'm as I told you a free man to say whatever I want